Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very exponential number, I mean very exponential equation with Euler's number, which is E. E is about 2.7 but that doesn't matter, we're just going to call it E. We have E to the power E to the power Z equals negative 1 and we're going to be solving for Z values. We've done similar problems before. I think we've done e to the e to the z equals 1. And that was kind of like an interesting problem because this might imply that e to the z equals 0. But as you know, that's impossible. For any complex number, this is not going to work. Okay? So what happens if that's equal to negative 1? That's going to be even crazier, right? So let's go ahead and... Um, you know, go ahead and make some guesses at this point. See if you can guess Z. We're going to be looking at the solution and then the result from Wolfram Alpha, if I don't forget. Okay, so let's see how we can solve this problem. We have an exponential on the left. So let's go ahead and complexify negative 1 and write it as an exponential. As you should hopefully know, when we have something like a complex number, Z, it can be written as R, E to the power I theta where R is the modulus or the absolute value and theta would be the argument in this case I'm kind of using the principal argument obviously you can add multiples of 2 pi to it to generate more and more arguments or just angles in other words right so before we get into the solution let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of these two functions e to the e to the z is very similar to e to the z in the real world right and y equals negative 1 is, or whatever you want to call that, that negative 1 is a horizontal line. Obviously, they don't intersect, which means there are no real solutions. That's why we're doing this problem. This problem doesn't have any real solutions, which is what makes it more fun. Okay, let's see how we can solve it using Euler's formula. So, we have e to the e to the z equals negative 1. And I'm going to go ahead and turn negative 1 into a complex number. Okay? In polar form. So here's the argon plane. We have the real axis and the imaginary axis. And negative 1 is basically 0 or negative 1 plus 0i. You can write it as negative 1 plus 0i, which means the imaginary part is 0, which means this is going to be on the real axis because it's a real number. That makes sense, right? So negative 1 can be plotted as follows. And the argument basically is the, first of all, this is the R. It's modulus is going to be 1 because distance from 0, right? That's 0. And the angle that it makes can be basically expressed as pi radians. But that's not the only angle. That's just going to be the principal argument. I think we include pi, but not negative pi. Something like that, right? Anyways, we talked about it in a previous video. You can go ahead and refer to that, but it's going to be pi, but I can also add multiples of 2 pi to it. So, here's what we can do. e to the e to the z equals negative 1, which can be written as 1 times, that's the modulus, e to the power i times theta. The argument, the principal one is pi, and then I can go ahead and add 2 pi n, where n is an integer. Okay? Great. Now we can simplify this a little bit, but before that, let's go ahead and focus on the exponents. This, when you natural log both sides, this should equal that. So that gives us e to the z equals i times pi plus 2 pi n. Here's the thing though. On the right hand side, obviously we could write this as e to the power i times pi plus 2 pi n times 1, which is e to the power i times 2 pi k. This is equivalent to 1, right? Where k is an integer, n and k don't have to be the same. So in other words, when you do the natural log, you are going to have an additional i times 2 pi k. But guess what? Adding another multiple of 2 pi to this is not going to make a difference, so we don't really have to worry about it. So let's leave it at that and see how we can solve this problem. This problem is kind of interesting because there are two layers. We did the, you know, complexification and then 
we use natural log, but we still got an exponential. So we have to do it one more time. But before we do it, we kind of need to complexify the right hand side or should I shouldn't say that because it's, it's already imaginary, but we have to kind of exponentiate it, right? How do you write this in polar form? It's a multiple of i, but the million dollar question is, is it a positive multiple of i or a negative multiple of pi? I mean i, not pi. Because if you think about it, i is going to appear here, but negative i is going to appear here. So they have different arguments. So there's different ways to write it. That's why we're going to kind of split it up into two cases. Before I do that, though, let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit by taking out by taking out an i pi, and inside we're going to have 2n plus 1. An odd multiple of pi, in other words, is going to generate with i the number negative 1. Make sense? Okay, cool. Now we can go ahead and take a look at, actually I made a mistake, this is not e to the power, it's supposed to be the number itself. So it's, I meant i times pi, and then 2n plus 1. Here we go. So that's my number, then how do I write this in polar form? So we're going to consider two cases. Case 1, n is less than 0. Now what happens if n is negative, like negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 1 million? This implies that 2n plus 1 is less than 0. So our theta is going to be negative pi over 2. This one, you see that? negative pi over 2, when you have a negative multiple of i. So, but how do we write this in polar form though? Here's how we can do it. Since this is going to be a negative number, I can't use it. Pi is part of the modulus. But I can't use 2n plus 1 because that will be a negative, but the modulus cannot be negative. So I have to absolute value it, which is going to give me its opposite, because the opposite of 2n plus 1 is positive, right? So I can kind of write it as pi times negative 2n minus 1 times e to the power negative i pi over 2. Remember the argument is negative pi over 2. Make sense? Here's our equation. Let's go ahead and natural log both sides. And that's going to give us z equals ln of pi times negative 2n minus 1 plus the ln of this expression is going to be negative i pi over 2. I don't really need plus and a minus sign. I can just use a minus sign, which is going to give me the solution. So this is one of the solutions for negative n values. Since n is an integer, it can be negative or positive or even 0, right? Can it be 0? You can check it out. Well, for the second case scenario, if n is greater than or equal to 0, because if n is 0, we're going to get a positive multiple of i, right? In this case, we're going to get 2n plus 1 is going to be positive. So our theta is going to be pi over 2 on the imaginary axis. And e to the z can be written as the same way, basically, without changing anything. And it's going to look like this. And from here, z can be written as ln of pi times 2n plus 1, which you could distribute, plus i times pi over 2. That's going to be the other case. So there are basically two different types of solutions. And let's see what Wolfram Alpha gives us, right? We're, we're going to compare, take a good look at the solutions, at least one of them. And Wolfram Alpha says the solutions are as follows. What is that supposed to mean? Who knows? And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.